Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Alright, well, just when you thought it was over, just when you thought it couldn't possibly get worse for Bud Light, it got worse for Bud Light. In fact, it got so much worse for Bud Light and Anheuser-Busch. This is possibly the worst news that they've received since the start of this entire ordeal. And who would have thought that the final blow wouldn't be dealt by all the frustrated patriots or by their core consumer base, but rather by the group that they've been chasing, by the group, the social justice, cultural Marxist side that they've been trying to pander to, is now, get this, engaging in a anti-Bud Light boycott. Yep, you heard that right. And this is why companies should simply stay away from this cultural nonsense. It's a lose-lose situation. Why would you delve into the divisive? You're simply not gonna win. Bud Light should have stuck to beer or something else, literally anything but the culture wars and politics. They didn't listen, and well now it's pretty much as bad as you could possibly imagine. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, I don't know if it's poetic justice. I don't know if it's real life comedy, I don't know what it is, but this headline, my initial reaction was honestly a pretty healthy laugh. We got this from the New York Post, Bud Light, quote, will be extinct in a few years for disavowing individual who shall not be named, activist says. The attempt by Bud Light's parent company, Anheuser-Busch, to distance itself from transgender social media influencer, the individual who shall not be named, puts the iconic American beer brand at risk of going, quote, extinct according to an LGBTQ activist. Stacey Lentz, co-owner of New York City's historic gay and lesbian landmark Stonewall, Inc., told Newsweek that Bud Light, quote, missed an opportunity to stand by their commitment to the trans community by pandering to and giving in to, quote, transphobic outcries. And Hauser-Busch CEO Michael Dukaris told investors on an earnings call Thursday that the company was disavowing ties to the individual. We need to clarify the facts that this was one can, one influencer, one post, and not a campaign. Michael Dukaris told investors investors during the call. Ducaris was attempting damage control after calls for a boycott of Bud Light grew in the wake of its partnership with the individual. But Lentz and other LGBTQ activists think that the company failed to stand behind the transgender influencer and stick up for the community. As far as marketing, I hope and think that they realize that as a brand, they will be extinct in a few years if they are not fully on the side of equality, as that is what Gen Z consumers expect and demand. Here we go again with, I think, what can only be described as threats, the sort of the cult-like behavior behavior of you're going to be extinct if you don't absolutely adhere to our dogma and genuflect to our values and activist rhetoric. Bud Light just keeps digging the hole deeper and deeper. I mean, this pathetic response from Ducaris wasn't even really a disavowal of the individual. I know that's how a lot of people are framing the topic. What he actually said in that earnings call was that it wasn't a partnership, it was one simple campaign, and he actually claimed that right-wingers were spreading, quote, misinformation about the topic. He didn't disavow anyone or take any side, really, it was just an act of complete cowardice. To be honest, he probably should have said literally nothing, because as you know, with these Wokies, you can never be woke enough. That's one thing these companies need to seriously learn. Going woke is something that I simply wouldn't suggest, because you put yourself in a position where if you do it once, you're going to be held to a woke standard forever, and the woke standard is, well, I guess the best way you could describe it, a shifting goalpost, where you're constantly going to have to be outdoing yourself, you're never going to be woke enough, and whatever your fancy woke standard from last week was, the next week is not going to be woke enough, the stance on the issue is constantly shifting, it's simply a miserable crowd that you will never be able to please. Bud Light made a real, real mistake here, and already, the leftist cancel mob is kicking into high gear. Chicago gay bars stop selling selling Bud Light, other Anheuser-Busch beers after brand backs down to anti-trans critics. Now we're seeing a trend across the LGBTQ community. Doing what? Boycotting Anheuser-Busch. I mean, it's a double whammy at this point. All Bud Light had to do was not get into politics. You know, it's kind of the standard of the right if you think about it. It's nothing really crazy. People just don't want politics or political indoctrination and messages shoved in their face in places where it doesn't belong. Basically the standard. On the left side, the outrage stems from not doing everything that they say and not being a hardcore woke enough and so companies should probably take the right-wing approach you know don't go woke don't necessarily pander to conservative values simply be a beer company
company. I know it's a real crazy concept, real out of this world, out of the box thinking stuff. Well, that's kind of the problem. All these companies are trying too hard to think out of the box. And thinking out of the box seems to be pandering to the craziest social trends that you could attach yourself to. That's the problem and that's why people are frustrated. Simply stick to your roots. It's not complicated. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. But in the world of shareholder capitalism, I mean, I don't blame them, but these corporate executives, their jobs depend on endless quarterly growth. And so they're running out of ideas and the laziest option, pander to the woke mob. I don't know how many times this has to happen until people realize that it's a seriously bad idea. And it's an especially bad idea now that patriots are getting involved. You know, there's growing cultural influence on the other side. If you get woke, there's going to be consequences. And then if you take a step back from that wokeness, there's going to be even more consequences. This is the most fascinating event or example of get woke, go broke I've ever seen. Now we're also learning that Anheuser-Busch, Ken's third-party ad agency tied to the individual who shall not be named fiasco, Anheuser-Busch is telling U.S. beer distributors that it has fired the third-party ad agency behind the Bud Light individual who shall not be named fiasco, but the beer giant is staying tight-lipped about the marketing firm's identity, even launching a fresh ad campaign aimed at damage control, the Post has learned. The New York Times is reporting that Anheuser-Busch changes beer marketing focus after transgender promotion. It's a step in the right direction, but honestly, it's too little too late. The damage has been done. I don't think Bud Light drinkers are coming back on board, at least not anytime soon. And so this shift in marketing focus probably isn't going to do it, and now they have to contend with the rabid woke mob. You know, the real cancel culture mob. And that right there is a very dangerous position to be in. Executives at the beer giant told analysts that Bud Light's focus going forward will be on sports and music. Kind of funny in a way. Right back to their roots, huh? Hopefully for them, they keep it simple. You know, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. And not hire any marketing artists moving forward with green hair and septum nose rings with fresh ideas like marketing in the sports world for March Madness using TikTok influencers that shall not be named. The greatest combination since Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Actually, the most absurd, the craziest idea ever devised in the history of marketing. Oh, how interesting things have gotten in the clown world. I mean, could you imagine an episode of Mad Men? What is that, 1960s New York? Listen, boss, I've got the greatest marketing shtick you could possibly imagine. You just simply can't imagine it outside of the context of this crazy world that we live in right now, or at least the current state of the world. Boy, is it backfiring, and I think it's about to get a whole lot worse for Bud Light as we move slowly to the next earnings reports in the next fiscal quarter, which I think is going to be an absolute bloodbath for them, and now probably even going to get way worse. I mean, just think about it. In one month, starting on June 1st, it's... Pride Month, and what's Bud Light gonna do? I mean, seriously, what is Bud Light gonna do? They're in a very sticky situation. They're facing a boycott from the LGBTQ community, and on the back end, they have angry patriots who just want to keep it about beer. I have a feeling this Bud Light saga is really just getting started. Now, we'll have to see just how bad it gets. I have a feeling it's gonna get a whole lot worse. A trend in this Bud Light saga, even in ways that you wouldn't expect. What's the next chapter, the next twist in the story? I'm not exactly sure. But you know one thing for sure, I'm going to keep you guys updated on all of it, of course. Like I always say before I sign off in these videos, this thing ain't over yet. I truly believe that Bud Light must be made the sacrificial lamb for a much, much greater cause. The cause of being able to enjoy a beer or watch a movie or watch a sports game without being bombarded with leftist indoctrination. It does not end here, and so we continue moving forward. That's what I got for you guys in this one, though. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Of course, you know that we would love to have you here at the Liberal Hive Mind. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you on the next one.